Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before this city council in this city and pray to you, dear God. And we ask that you would be with this city council tonight and grant them the wisdom that they need to, to do the things that would be right for our, our great city called Milton. Lord, just please watch over them and care for them, lead, guide, and direct them. Please be with all the employees of our, our city. Please be with our police department, our fire and rescue, and watch over them and protect them. And Lord, we just pray that you keep us safe during this holiday season, that we can celebrate Christmas in the right way. Please protect us from this virus and help us to be wise, dear God, to look after one another. Lord, we just pray that you'd search the hearts of all that's here tonight. You know each individual and personal prayer request that's on everybody's hearts and mind. Please forgive us of our many sins, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Cagle, thank you very much for being here and leading us in prayer tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it. Okay, I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Milton City Council for Monday, December 21st, 2020 to order. The city strongly recommends that you review tonight's agenda carefully, and if you wish to speak on any item on the agenda, then please bring your comment card to the clerk as soon as possible. Well, the Milton rules allow a speaker to turn in their comment card up until the clerk calls the agenda item. Once the agenda item is called, no more comment cards can be accepted. So if our city clerk can please call roll and make general announcements. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'll be happy to call roll for the December 21st, 2020 regular meeting. I would like to remind those in attendance to please silence all cell phones at this time. Those attending the meeting who would like to make a public comment, you are required to complete a public comment card prior to speaking on the item. Your comment card must be presented to the city clerk prior to the agenda item being called. All speakers, please identify yourself by name, address, and organization before beginning your comment. If you are in representing an organization, an affidavit is required stating you have the authority to speak on behalf of that organization. Please review tonight's agenda, and if you would like to make a public comment, please bring your comment card to me now. Demonstration of any sort within the chamber is prohibited. Please refrain from any applause, cheering, booing, outburst, or dialogue with any person speaking. Anyone in violation will be asked to leave. As I call roll this evening, please confirm your attendance. Mayor Joe Lockwood. Here. Council Member Peyton Jamison. Here. Council Member Paul Moore. Here. Council Member Laura Bentley. Here. Council Member Carol Cookerly. Here. Council Member Joe Longoria. Here. And joining us via Zoom, Council Member Rick Morig. Here. Thank you. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Okay, I want to welcome everybody here tonight. Thank you for being here. Um, if our clerk will please call. The first item, sound the next item. <clears throat> Mayor, we do have two public, general public comments. Okay. Um, let's first, we'll call the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, right. let me do that one first. Approval of meeting agenda, agenda item number 2352. Okay. I'd like to add an executive session to uh, discuss... Uh, land acquisition, potential litigation, and personnel. Any other changes on the agenda? Then I'll open up for a motion. Mayor, one more item under under that. Okay. For the item number 2358. Okay. You'd like to pull that agenda on? Yes, please. Okay. So uh, with tonight's agenda, I want to add an executive session as discussed and pull agenda item number 20-358. Thank you. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda with the addition of an executive session and the deletion of item number 20-358. Second. Okay. I have a motion for approval as read along from Councilmember Bentley with a second from Councilmember Moore. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. That's unanimous. Okay. Our next item is... 
general public comment. Public comment is a time for citizens to share information with the mayor and city council and to provide input and opinions on any matter that is not scheduled for its own public hearing during tonight's meeting. Each citizen who chooses to participate in public comment must complete a comment card and submit it to the city clerk. Or raise your hand if you're, you're joining us virtually. Prior to the agenda item being called, please remember this is not a time to engage the mayor or members of city council in conversation. When your name is called, please come forward or unmute yourself if you're virtual and speak into the microphone stating your name and address for the record. You'll have five minutes for remarks. The city encourages you to review the agenda, and if you wish to speak, to bring your comment cards to the clerk or raise your hand virtually uh, right now. So I will open up for public comment. Tammy? Thank you, Mayor. I do have three. The first one I would like to read into the record. Miss Judy Birds, who's not able to attend with us tonight, sent this in. She does reside at 1165 Bream Drive here in Milton. I am requesting that the city of Milton increase its efforts to inform and enforce among its citizens ordinance 20-657 regarding loud noises from consumer fireworks. These loud noises have a negative impact to our equestrian community as well as others. While there are two upcoming dates where such loud firework noise is permitted, the citizenry needs to understand and comply with the restrictions to only those two days. Horse owners, pet owners, and those with PTSD, such as some veterans, can prepare for those two known days if other citizens comply. The noise violations began this past weekend. Citizens need to understand that loud noises from fireworks are permitted on two upcoming days, not two weeks. Citizens and dispatch need to be reminded of Milton's requirements, and the police need to be prepared to enforce violations. On this 21st day, Miss Judy Birds. Our next public comment is going to be from Miss Tamara Dedirgis. Hi, Tamara Dedirgis, 1425 Birmingham Road. Um, I'm also coming here to talk about or, um, Code um, 20 657, the noise ordinance and fireworks. Um, for people that have animals, whether they're big or small, a family pet or even a horse, um, sensitivities or PTSD, we need this ordinance enforced. It's on the books, and I really appreciate that you guys put this on the books. Um, however, it needs to be enforced better. This, there are lots of surprise elements and lots of surprises. And recently, a subdivision went in across the street from me, and now... I have surprises all the time, and having a 1,400-pound animal or multiple 1,400-pound animals go nuts, um, it's dangerous. And it's not just dangerous for me or the animals, it's dangerous to the community because if they get out or they blow through a post, um, now, now we've got more people involved. Um, so I, I would just like to ask that this is enforced um, for everybody, both animals and the people of this community. Um, and that there's clear communication from the city. Um, I appreciate that the city has made um, some statements on their mm -hmm. web pages. Um, however, sometimes it appears that it's more of a suggestion rather than an ordinance that has very clear boundaries. Um, and this, this honestly is for everyone's good because, I mean, fireworks even cause a lot of injuries. Um, you know, it, in the United States each year, there's more than 10,000 injuries, and that's putting people in the, in the hospital and emergency rooms, which, which do not need that during a pandemic. So I, I would just like to ask that you guys um, support, support this ordinance and enforce it, enforce it for us so that we remove the surprise elements. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, our next public general comment will be from Mr. Brad Champion. Oh, good evening. Um, basically doing the same thing that the two people me, prior Brad, were. I'm Brad Champion, 14385 Cogburn Road here in Milton. Um, basically to support the noise ordinance as well, we uh, 
have horses. We've seen the deleterious effects that fireworks can have. Um, unfortunately, I've got a 100-pound German Shepherd who will dive under the bed um, for the same reason. And it's not that we're against fireworks. It's just that these things are going on until 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, if you've ever seen a horse climb a wall, break through a fence, it's not a very pretty sight. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of our heritage. I mean, it's up on the sign, and it's not just for those. I mean, obviously, the things that we do here in this city for Memorial Day, for Veterans Day, um, we obviously have a lot of veterans that live here. I think it's just more along the lines of awareness. Uh, there was a holiday what, three weeks ago, and uh, it's a you know, fairly you know, atypical holiday with Diwali, and we had fireworks going off 3, 4 o'clock in the morning all night long. And uh, I think it's more just a public awareness thing. I don't know how you guys, you know, can get that out there on the signs. I mean, you know, you see a lot of homeowners who have that up on theirs. And then again, it goes back to the enforcement of the code. Um, and I don't know if there's a, you know, kind of a possibility of a little bit better enforcement of that code. But uh, it's definitely something that's of concern to, you know, our heritage here in the city of Milton. Thanks. All right. Thank you for bring, bringing that forward to us. Thank you. Okay. Our final public comment is from Mr. Alasdair. If you would please come to the podium, state your name and your address, please. Hello, uh, my name is Alastair Rombo, and I'm at 14, Thompson Road. Um, also, like many people here, I just moved here in 2019. Uh, the reason I moved here from California um, was the reason why the signs are everywhere here, the horse town. I was told if you have horses, you have to be in Milton. And so uh, we moved to Milton. Uh, we're very, very happy overall. And I think like many other people said, predictability is really what we're looking for. Um, we have earplugs for horses. They're difficult to get in. It's a whole process. We know on December 31st and on July 4th, we have to get friends to help us, put earplugs in everybody and get everybody organized. And usually it goes fine. I think the issue we have is when it's December 23rd or, you know, January 7th, uh, and, and that's when we're not prepared and there no, may be nobody going home. We have big thoroughbreds that weigh, you know, 1,500 pounds getting onto a road. We're on Thompson Road. It's always, you know, always a, a, something that, that scares us when those things happen. So, again, like everybody else, we're not against it. We, we you know, we, we like to party like everybody else. I think it's just predictability and sticking to those predictabilities so that all of the horse owners in, in Milton can be prepared. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much to all our speakers for bringing this forward to us as this is uh, very important for the city. All right. Uh, <clears throat> move on to the consent agenda. Tammy, if you could please sound the consent agenda items. Our first item is approval of an agreement between the City of Milton and 10-8 Fire and Safety Equipment of Georgia, LLC, for the purchase of self-contained breathing apparatus for the Milton Fire Rescue Department. Agenda item number 2353. Our next item is approval of a professional services agreement between the City of Milton and Property Masters Commercial Landscaping, LLC, to provide tree installation at the Milton Public Safety Complex. Agenda item number 2354. Our third item is approval of an agreement between the City of Milton and Crabapple Green, LLC, for Meet Me in Milton 2021 dates. Agenda item number 2355. Our next item is approval of an extension of intergovernmental agreement between the City of Milton and the City of Alpharetta regarding shared municipal court ser clerk services. Agenda item number 2356. Our fifth item is approval of subdivision plats and revisions. The name of the development of the first development is Milton Point, Landlot 1171 and 1206 in District 2, Section 2, located at 12455 Broadwell Road. It's a minor plat with one commercial building and one mixed-use building. It's a total of 2.87 acres. Our second and final subdivision plat and revision is Joshua Smith at Landlot 189, District 2, Section 2, at 2255 Mountain Road. It's a minor plat to be subdivided into three tracks with a total acres of 12.729 with a 0 0.23 lot density per acre. Agenda item number 20357. Okay. Do I have a motion on the consent agenda? 
Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Second. Yeah, I have a motion uh, for approval from Councilmember Bentley with a second from um, Councilmember Cookerly. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Tonight, we don't have any items under reports and presentations. First presentation, public hearing or zoning agenda. So if the city clerk will please down the first unfinished business item. That item is consideration of an ordinance approving a list of names as standby judges for the municipal court for the city of Milton, Georgia, pursuant to Article 5 of the city charter. Agenda item number 20, 347. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, Brooke Lappin wasn't able to make it tonight, so I am going to fill in for her. Um, so the, the list of um, the roster of standby judges that are before you, if approved, um, are judges that can preside over the Milton's Municipal Court when Judge Hansford is unavailable. To serve as a judge in our Municipal Court, the candidate must be at least 21 years of age and have served um, three years or has been a member of the State Bar for at least three years. Aside from these requirements, the candidates must have experienced a municipal court setting. They must be familiar with Milton's um, court procedures and have availability on the days that we hold court. So the five candidates we have before you tonight are Barry Zimmerman, Jared Mitnick, Keith Carnesale, Richard Hicks, Candace Howard, and Marsha Ernst. And they have all met the requirements and qualifications are being recommended by Judge Hansford to serve in his to serve to serve as standby judges. I'll be happy to answer any questions. You know, I just want to make a statement too. I think this thing, you know, may have got a little bit of legs, but it really was just especially with COVID. I think staff wanted to look at having some options or whatever. Exactly. And, uh, so, but now you guys have vetted through it and Ken's office and all that. So we're all should be good with this. Okay. Any questions from anybody? I'll uh, open up for a motion then. <clears throat> Mayor, I move that we approve agenda item number 20 347. <clears throat> second. Okay, I have a motion from Council Member Longoria, the second from Council Member Moore for approval. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And that's unanimous. Mr. Mayor, I yes, make sir. a point of order very quickly with respect to this evening, just to put this on the record. Um, I know that uh, Council Member Morig is attending uh, remotely this evening. And I just wanted to make clear on the record that um, I think he is, you know, the, the Georgia law anticipates two remote participation opportunities per year, but there can be exceptional circumstances which allow more than that. In this case, I believe, due to COVID, not that he has it, but I think there has been an exposure. So this is a precautionary uh, exercise. And uh, he did consult with me, and I was comfortable with him given that we are in this pandemic still, given that we're still in a locally declared emergency, that it was appropriate. Just wanted that on the record, and forgive me for not uh, doing that earlier. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thanks. Okay, if our clerk will please read the final unfinished business item. That second item is consideration of an ordinance to amend Chapter 4 and Appendix A of the Milton Code of Ordinances, Alcoholic Beverages, to update various sections and substantially re reorganize Article 3. Agenda item number 2348, Ms. Sarah Ladart. Tammy. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, Council approved a rewrite on Chapter 4, Alcoholic Beverages, in June of 2020. As staff worked to implement the new ordinance, there were additional opportunities for clarity and encouraged a few new ideas. <clears throat> Most of the revisions do not change the already approved integrity or intent of the ordinance or its specific section. What I will be presenting on tonight are the 13 sections that have notable changes, as well as a few additions to the correlating chart in Appendix A, which outlines fees. The first is Section 412A, unlicensed sales or deliveries there it goes, sorry. Um, sales or deliveries prohibited. So the state recently approved delivery of liquor, beer, and wine, and the wording that council approved in June allowed establishments to do this um, that hold a retail sales license to deliver um, liquor, beer, and wine, but simply stated as allowed by state law. In interpreting that, we thought that it would be helpful for both staff and for people reading this to 
put what the state allows in there. So this doesn't change the integrity of it. It's just um, a further clarification that you can deliver um, beer, wine, and liquor. The next is um, section 30, which is application requirements. Um, in June, we created a grand opening annual promotion permit that allows establishments once a year for four hours to give away beer and wine. Uh, there is no fee associated with the permit, and this revision makes it clear that they only have to submit their name and then the date, time, and location of the event. No background checks or pouring permits are required because they are not selling the alcohol. And the next is 440B2, um, consideration of applications by the chief of police and city manager. Um, A. Much like in section 430 where we reduce the application process, we're also saying that there's no requirement for the chief of police to approve the special event or grand opening annual promotion permit. And in B, we are saying that we clarify that temporary alcoholic beverage licenses, conditional licenses, and permits do not require a public hearing in front of city council and can be approved by the city manager. And section 43 is conditional approval prior to completion of proposed licensed premises. premises. Um, the first sentence of this section was a little confusing. Um, so this is for an establishment that's not yet open, does not have their certificate of occupancy, but in order for um, an establishment to get their state alcohol license, they first have to have the city alcohol license. So we do have a provisional one, um, and this allows, this clarifies that and gives permission for the city manager or his or her designee um, to give that approval instead of bringing it in front of council. Section 52 is transferability of a license. And we thought this section where it says a personal representative of the estates appointed by the probate court could take longer than necessary to do. So we removed that and said that they, uh, the licensee just has to apply for a new license in the event that somebody passes away. Um, Article 3, we worked with um, Gerard and Davis, and they completely revised the way this is laid out to make it much more clear to, again, both staff and businesses to interpret what licenses they're qualified for and if prerequisites are required. Um, this restructuring, for the most part, does not change the already approved integrity or intent of the section. There are a few that had notable changes in this article that I'll go over now. Um, One-time permits is Section 72. This waives the require or allows for the city manager to waive one-time alcohol permits for applicants when they are participating in city-sponsored events like meet me in milton or crab apple fest um, limit section 77 limited sales or consumption on premise licenses we added in june that no person under the age of 18 should work in a byob establishment but after talking to some holders of a byob license it was very clear that that's a an undue restriction. There's nothing in the law that mandates that. I mean, they need to be able to have 16-year-olds working, and the 16-year-old the never handles the alcohol, and the alcohol doesn't belong to the establishment. It belongs to the individual. <clears throat> so we thought we could delete that sentence. Um, section 81, we're changing back to Section 85, just a numbering thing, because we have talked so much about Section 85 farm wineries and communications um, and at council meetings. So just changing that was... A simple change and then also just in talking um, through farm wineries in the future just putting a line in there to make it very clear that they have to be in compliance with chapter 64 in zoning chapter 87 is alcoholic beverage caterers and this change gives the city manager again the opportunity to have a designee and approve these as well as a sentence about non-resident caterers that they must include with their application their and current alcohol license and server permits from their, juris, from their home jurisdiction. In Section 90, we had already created this, but the restaurant package sales license, so you can go to a restaurant, um, get your takeout, and get your six-pack of beer or your bottle of wine um, in a limited capacity. But when we created it in June, they still had to pay that same retail price, the, the package store price. So we reduced this to $100 because they can only sell one bottle of wine or one package of beer to a person. And um, then to the grand opening annual promotion permit, just clarifications again. <clears throat> we said special event, and we use special event all over the city code. So we just deleted the word special. Um, and then in section A, we call out that you cannot sell it. But then in section B, we use the word selling and sell. So we just deleted that so it doesn't contradict itself. Um, then moving on from 
Article 3, hours and days of sales, in rewriting, it came to our attention that for Sunday sales, for you to have a Sunday sales license, you have to be 50-50. That's a state rule. Um, so we started charging for Sunday sales licenses because a lot of our neighbors do. And as part of rewriting Chapter 4 was to look for new revenue opportunities. So we added that Sunday sales licenses were now required, but we didn't give the opportunity to the Crowler Growler licensees or the craft beer and wine market, even though they do have the potential to sell food and have that 50-50. And Section 154, the Merlot to go provision, again, just giving the city manager the opportunity to have a designee approve these. And then to Appendix A, we adjusted the brew pub. Um, it's not increasing their fee by $1,400. They only have to get a brew pub license. They don't have to get separate consumption, retail, ancillary. It's all in one. And then we added the reduced price for Sunday sales for those two things. Um, and then the reduced price for the restaurant package sales license. Thank you. Are there any questions? Any questions for Sarah on these items? Question for you, Jeff. Um, so with this presentation this evening, is the request before us to adopt all these changes with a vote this evening? It, it is. Okay, I, I would just propose I'm not prepared to vote on this tonight, and the fact that this presentation was not in our packet didn't give me ample time or any opportunity to review them in any detail. I'm not quite sure why it wasn't in the packet. Normally these kinds of things are included, but for whatever reason it wasn't in accessible in my preparation. For this. Okay. Um, I don't know. I thought it was. There was a staff memo for sure. I thought it was. I know we got in a, a memo, but. <clears throat> sent something out on Friday. He was in the memo, but I sent you on Friday, <clears throat> okay, which I which I read. But I thought there was going to be another interpretation of it in a copy of the presentation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm I my unfortunately I'm not prepared to vote, so I'll have to abstain. Okay. Is there anything anywhere else on this? Any other questions or you, anyone else had an issue? Okay. Well, it is before us for a motion of vote, so I will open up for a motion. Here I make a motion that if I can find it again, sorry. Oh, that we approve agenda item number 23. Okay. I have a motion from council member Cookerly with a uh, an approval and a second from Council Member Longoria. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. So we've got, uh, I believe that was six in favor with uh, Council Member Moore abstaining on that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, um, we have uh, pulled the, the new business item, so we'll move on to uh, reports. Is there anything the council would like to report on? That's from Bentley. I just wanted <clears throat> to um, uh, tag along on the, the fireworks conversation that we had earlier um, and make sure that I, I'm sure that there are plans to do our regular um, PR boost as we enter into the holiday season, um, it is very helpful to the farm owners and the pet owners and veterans just to make folks aware of, you know, when fireworks are, what the ordinance reads, what we can and can't do as a city as far as limiting the noise. Um, yep, totally, totally agree. So. Okay. Um, any other council reports? And we'll move on to staff reports, community development. <clears throat> Bob and Tracy, come on down. While Tracy gets this up, I want to wish everybody happy holiday and happy new year. It's the end of the year, and it's, I can't believe it's come so fast. Okay. Uh, as you can see, I've 
brought some of my team with me tonight because we just wanted to give everybody just a quick update of how the section's doing the department and uh, kind of just go over some some items, not everything, but just some of the highlights. Um, all right, so permitting, pools, uh, building permits, LDPs, plats. I think we're really catching up to date on these. Um, they, they, there was a lot of backlog on them, and I'm really, I think we're, we're back up and, and running with them. I think we're pretty much up to speed with a lot of those. And, and so I, I did want to thank my st staff because they really did a lot of work. They really, really came through uh, and, and really put a lot of emphasis on it. Working with applicants, I, I think the, the attitude will be, you know, very proactive, trying to really help the applicant through, trying to come up with solutions that will uh, help people kind of get through the system and really, you know, understand our codes and what our intent is and trying to make it nicer. So, um, but I, I do want to say I think we're doing really well with that. Consultant contracts, I've been digging into these. I don't really have them all uh, down pat yet, but I do want to say that I, I've been working with Bernadette and we, I've been canceling some of these uh, task order contracts that were set. These were just open contracts that if the community development director felt, you know, we needed a task order for something that's sort of an on-call, we could just pick up the phone and um, it, it's really not set up that way. You really can't just pick up the phone. You'd still have to go through and get counsel to approve it. And uh, we're trying to do more in-house. So with the talent we have and uh, getting that talent up to date. So we're really, I just canceled those. And I think we're trying to clean up a lot of these consultant contracts. Um, anything that was expired uh, or outstanding, we're trying to clean up, get them back. So you saw some of those on the consents in the past a couple of weeks. Um, and that's because I'm trying to get them back up and running and try to clean them up. Um, so we're, I think we're really working on that, and, and I will, I'm going to use the word accountability. S consultants are awesome. They really are talented, but we're really pushing them for that accountability. Uh, we have a certain expectation that when we hire them, they have to deliver, and they have to deliver on time, and they have to give us what we really want. And I think that's really important. It's a, it's a different message, and we're really pushing that message, uh, and I think we're going to see that. Um, Sediment and erosion control, which is all the site work that we've cleaned that up. We hired Josh full time. He's been doing a great job and, and, and everybody's really out there uh, doing, doing that together. Uh, they've been working with Jerry, who's um, he's actually a consultant, but he's here part time. But, you know, he's really been stepping up and, and doing a lot of work with that. Ken, the city engineer, has been working with us on that. And he's been doing a phenomenal job, too. He's really been helping us out. Um, Text amendments, I've told you we're working on all those and we're getting them up to date. Uh, BZA, DRB, Planning Commission, um, they're all going pretty well. We, we did, Cody Hendricks did leave. Uh, it was a big, uh, big hit, but we got Schuber working and we're training and getting Schuber uh, to take over. So she's been doing it. And um, I just wanted to give some recognition to Paul. Uh, Fricky from Ken's office. He's been doing a phenomenal job. He's working with us, and we're really trying to get uh, the, these boards um, to continue to function nice and smoothly. They've been doing well, but we're going to continue to do that. Tree canopy, December 1st, the, the tree canopy ordinance went into effect, and actually uh, it's been doing well. We had a, a couple of questions and that you know the, the development community had asked, Initially, Kim Mann said, oh, geez, I'm not sure. What do you think? And then we kind of sat him down and showed him and went through it with him and kind of did the exercise for them, showed him it worked. And now, actually, we're getting really, really good responses from it because I think we're just educating the community, the development community, on how it works and actually showing it to them. Uh, so that, that ordinance is working well. Um, bonds. I don't know, uh, Tracy, you want to you get up and talk about She's done a phenomenal job with bonds. Just give a quick update on Mayor, council members, uh, we've actually worked really closely with the finance department to identify and resolve any unsettled cash bonds before the end of the year. So at our end of the year review, we identified um, and released 14 cash bonds for 11 different 
projects. Seven of them were for residential and four were for commercial projects. So we're pretty pleased with that, that we were able to clear those off the books. Um, we are we have recently just processed new bonds for four different projects, and we're going to continue to work closely with finance and uh, to sort of establish a more um, proactive approach um, to track and monitor bonds so that they can be released in a more timely manner. Um, but we feel pretty good where we're at right now with the bonds. So, thanks. Special thanks to finance. Bernadette's been awesome. Uh, we're trying to get a much better system on the bonds so we can keep this all flowing. Um, environmental. It, it, Teresa, I think. <clears throat> so just a review of some of the green efforts that we undertook in 2020. We held an electronics recycling event on Saturday, December 12th at Bell Memorial Park. Council member Longoria was there. At this point, we know that we accepted over 13 tons, 26,000 pounds of uh, recyclable um, electronic materials. We took basically anything with a plug. Um, and that figure, this is amazing, that figure does not even include all the laptops, CPUs, tablets, and cell phones, because those had to go to a different facility that handles materials that might have sensitive personal data on it. I don't have a figure for that yet, because they don't give that to us until they've destroyed it all. Um, we uh, had hundreds of cars, and although that meant some people had to wait for a while to make their way through the line, everyone seemed very happy with the event and asked when we would hold the next one. Um, I'd like to think we could hold one in the spring. We'll see what COVID brings. I also believe that there cannot be a tube TV left in Milton. <laughs> <laughs> it was unreal. Um, ComDev initiated and set up the event, but we couldn't have done it without the helps of, uh, help of Parks and Rec. Uh, that provided Bell Memorial as the location and helped work with us to, to get the best uh, setup for traffic flow and communications for working with our graphic designer to create a flyer and, and get the word out. It was a great collaborative green event. Other green initiatives from the year have been holding a paint collection event in November that took in over 10,000 pounds of latex paint and nearly 4,000 pounds of hazardous materials. Um, this, in case you're wondering why uh, an event happened in November and you might not have heard about it, this was our March event that we had to postpone due to COVID. So it was already full in March. We just moved those people back to November. So unfortunately, we weren't able to, to advertise it or add any new people. But we do believe we have enough funds left to have another event before the end of the fiscal year. Um, also in November, we were able to hold a small Rivers Alive cleanup at our Cooper Sandy Green space. Because of COVID, we could not have our no normal large fun gathering, but the smaller group was able to collect many bags of trash and divert this material from entering Milton's waterways. Um, the next item we have up there is uh, we are replacing a department vehicle with a hybrid, um, which is the first hybrid vehicle that the city is adding to its fleet, um, hopefully first of, of more. Um, and finally, uh, we have been working, uh, ComDev has been working with Parks and Public Works to find a location or locations for glass recycling collection. Um, we're looking to expand our sustainability efforts in 2021 and hope to not only maintain our green community's certification, but do what we can to move from bronze to silver. Bob said. Bob said. <laughs> Thank you. If you don't raise the bar, you never get there. <laughs> it's a shot. Um, okay, next big one is City View. And I got Dale here, and he's been heading up the effort of City's electronic plan. And I wanted Dale to give a quick update on that. There we go. Look at that. I'm Dale Hall. I'm the development review coordinator. I haven't been in front of you as a council yet, so I'm happy to be here for my first meeting. City View is a digital plan review system. It's been in the works for quite some time. It's actually right now what we do is we do all our permitting in paper we have multiple copies of plans applications has come through and the intent of this program is to um, eliminate 
or attempt to eliminate uh, all the paperwork and everything will be done in a digital format. It will allow for a lot more um, easier retrieval, timely review, and tracking of where all the applications are at certain time frame. It also is a, it, there's two components to this. Uh, there's also Bluebeam, and what Bluebeam is, is it's more of a, a PDF plan review. That will be an internal program that staff uses to actually mark up the plans and put comments specifically on the plans to clarify exactly what our comments are so when an individual applies, they will get back our specific comments and notes right on their plan so it's easier to review and revise. Uh, now, City View is more of the... It's a portal for the processing and setting up of our workflows of how things are tracked through our system. So in combination, the two work to allow for more of a seamless plan review uh, department. Uh, the staff is currently working with a consultant, as we have been for some time, to clarify all of our workflows. And when we talk about workflows, we're talking about uh, specific individuals that have to review specific applications. Uh, for example, a pool application only has to go to certain people, but a full-blown commercial development like we have at the parking deck going on uh, down the street that has multiple different reviews and people that would come uh, that would have to review the plan. So uh, that's what we talked about, workflow, workflows. Staff has had training on Bluebeam. We did that last month, and we'll continue to have some training on that to make sure that we all know how to work that. And it becomes uh, when it becomes online, we can actually work through the system more thoroughly. Uh, Trace and I meet weekly with City View, the consultants, to continue the implementation of this to make sure it keeps on track. Uh, the base operation right now, we have a system that is uh, operational internally, and Tracy and I have been looking on this, but it's not configured to, to what the, the city needs. It's an out-of-the-box type of uh, plan, and it's not, it's not ready for uh, setup and development. So we will have a uh, city of Milton program scheduled for March to be operational internally, where staff will be able to use this and start working on it. So there's some considerable training that staff needs to get on board and have before March with an external go live date in May, which in other words, when I said go live date, it's open to the public where they will actually start to use that. And then when we can turn off all the, the actual paper uh, flow that we have. Uh, I would anticipate that I'll be able to come back and Tracy and I will be able to do a, a dog and pony show, have a little demo of what we have probably in February. Now, it won't be the go live yet, but it'll show you actually how it works uh, from the external on in and, and a little bit of what we have to do internally. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions we have on this. I know this has been going on for some time, um, and I'd be more than happy to uh, help you get on board with where we're at today. Laura? Just a comment. Thank you for the timeline. Because I, I know I've been asked by several, you know, about it a lot, but we don't ever know when it you know, will we actually have it. So thank you so much for the timeline. That's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, if things come quicker, we'll have it faster. Staff's been spending a tremendous amount of time on this to get it up to speed to where it is right now, but there, there could be some <coughs> uh, curveballs we're not aware of that could change this, but I'll make sure that the city manager and, and Bob knows exactly where we're at um, on this moving forward. Well, it makes a lot of the paper go away. The roles that we see in the foyer uh, throughout the week that yeah. all becomes electronic. Yeah. Everything goes away. What happens is the applicant will do everything online. They'll go on to our city website. They'll upload the documents right through the city website, and then it comes internally. We'll do plan review and notify the applicants when the plans are done and everything's done internally. If you noticed, if you've gone through development or com dev, you'll see that we're starting to get these larger monitors. Those are because when we're reviewing them, we're actually reviewing them full, you know, live simultaneously on these large screens. When they come in, we can start to review them. And uh, seeing them on a small monitor, it's kind of hard to review a large plan. So, I'm assuming the development community is actually excited about it, too, because it eliminates a trip here and all the electronic exchange that can take place on 
questions or comments could theoretically speed up very cost the efficient process. very cost efficient also they won't have to pay for all that printing out of paperwork and whatnot great good job thank you no we <clears throat> appreciate all <throat> all your help on that <clears throat> yeah. the the plans will be reviewed uh, uh reviewed concurrently right now they're sequential we go from one person to the next now will be everybody could review them at once so it really will speed up the metrics we want our metrics to look good Steve pushes me on metrics, so we will look good. And, and thanks to Steve, we really have all the, uh, the, um, the equipment we need to execute this. So special thanks to Steve, because he really pushed hard to get me all the monitors and everything, and laptops and everything else. I just want to say thanks, because it's really, uh, it works when, when you have the support. Uh, all right, uh, so the comp plan, just the CPAC, um, December 10th, we had uh, our publicly held uh, kickoff meeting. And, um, sorry, okay, thanks. And um, we have a public survey that's open right now uh, till like at least January 8th. And uh, January 28th will be our next CPAC meeting, which is the big meeting, and staff is working uh, right now with the consultants and the steering committee and the CPAC uh, committee to look at actionable items for each character area to see really. We're zooming in on each character area to say, okay, exactly in this character area, what are potential issues that may be coming up, uh, things that we need to change. Uh, there's not a whole lot to change, but there's, there's all little subtleties, and those little subtleties could really enhance the development pattern that's, um, that's happening. Um, so we're really looking at that and trying to show the steering committee examples of things that are being built, what's in the queue, what's coming down, and what are some of the items. So I thought that was working out nice. The equestrian study, um, we extended that, that uh, consultant agreement. That was one of those that got, kind of got lost during the COVID period. We've renewed it, and we're starting to work on that. So all of these items that the community is coming forth on equestrian uh, elements, we do want. Milton to be the equestrian center. We do want Milton to have that that kind of uh, that kind of look and feel and brand. So we will be continuing to really refine some of these. And they might not all be com dev issues. There might be other issues. There might be things that deal with traffic and everything else. But we're going to look at them all. Uh, com dev will look at them all and then pull in all the other departments that we need to to do this holistically. It's not going to be just one department that's going to be able to solve this. So I, I have that. The next one is branding, and branding is really big. Great gateways and branding. The council just quickly has already approved some money, uh, and it's um, money that's um, renewed year over year. It's a multi-year kind of uh, 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 agreement that you guys gave us uh, for some money for branding, and we're really going to start working on that. So for 2021, we're really going to start looking at wayfinding signage and signage in general, like up, up in uh, Birmingham uh, Crossroads and Deerfield. How do we brand Deerfield? How do we really make Deerfield identifiable? When you drive into De the Deerfield community, how do you know that you're there? Because right now it's really difficult and it's a lot of spotty stuff between Alpharetta and Milton on land uh, ownership and things. It's difficult, but we're, we're really going to look at it in 2021. I want to tell the council we're going to be giving you updates at work, work, uh, work meetings to show you how we're going to start branding that. And it's, I think it's something that's, that's really going to um, be beneficial. Uh, just some quick projects. Station 42 is moving along. We're going to start demolition in probably right after the holidays. We'll be getting them out there. We, we're going to be on the DRB agenda to demolish the existing building. We will put up a sign showing people what the new one looks like. Architects are working out. Uh, they're really moving along with the completed plans probably in the spring, and we'll get that out to bid. So you'll, you'll see that coming up in 2021. Uh, Providence Park, there's a whole lot of folks in different departments working on Providence Park. It's a group effort. Uh, it's not just ComDev, it's, it's everybody. It's Parks Department, it's uh, Public Works. Everybody's really working together. And we're really trying to uh, put this. Um, uh, ComDev is really grabbing the bathhouse, the pier, and the broadwalk. Um, 
Public Works is doing the trail. But we, I think we all got together and decided we should just bid this out as a single project. It would probably be beneficial to do it that way. So that's what we're looking to do. So we'll, we'll be done with that, and hopefully we'll, we'll get that out there as soon as we can. Um, and Milton Country Club, again, is joint effort. We're, we got active, and inactive areas, passive areas. Um, but the, the plans will be complete very shortly, probably the end of January, and we'll start in uh, early spring by the time we bid it out and whatnot. We should start to see the active uh, community center uh, getting built. We already did the interior demo, the mold abatement, and the exterior accessory building. Demolition is all complete, and we're just finishing up on the, on the inside. Um, and it, it's looking pretty good, so at a work session, I'll show you what that's starting to look like. It's starting to look really good on the inside. Uh, Lakeside of Crabapple, that's the lake down here. Um, we will be transferring uh, that. Um, we'll be completing that whole transfer. We waited for the contractor to finish all the improvements. So they went ahead and built an arbor and did everything that we had asked them to do, which was really kind of nice. It came out nice. And uh, right after the holidays, we're going to transfer that land over as a, as a park. And Mayor, we started to have the Historical Society look at the Smith family, as you mentioned it. And I'll bring that back to you. They did a nice job. They really went through the whole thing. So hopefully if that, if that works for the council, because I'd like to name it. I would like to name the park. Um, all right, the walking school bus. That was our Smart Cities initiative. And I just want everybody to know we, we finished it up. We, we got the app out there. It's all done. We completed it. And the next step is implementation. So we're working with our communications, Greg, and he's going to see if he can start to get the word out and see if people will uh, start to utilize the app. And the public safety complex, I just wanted you all to know that uh, we're installing the trees tonight on the consent agenda was that contract. We're working with Sandra, uh, our arborist, and she's really taken a good lead role. And Scott Mulvey from the police department has also taken a big role in it. And between the two of them, we're really going to start. We didn't want to plant the trees in August because it's just not the right time. We're wasting money and time. So we're actually getting that, the funds for this out of the tree fund, city's tree fund. And then we're going to put it forth uh, now. January to March is the right time. So we, we have that all done and ready to rock and roll. Is that all of it? Yeah, I just wanted you to know that in, um, the, next, the next time I have a staff update, I'll be looking at giving you um, more specific calendar dates and 2021 goals. So we'll start looking at what, you know, what, what, what we can achieve in 2021. And we'll see what we can do. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, any questions, Laura? Just a quick comment. Oh, okay. So um, I've received numerous comments on the public safety complex, especially how it looks at night. So oh, it's beautiful. Yep. And um, also on that branding, let's leave some, some money for the equestrian zones. Yes. Uh, Bethany, Brittle, Summit, Wood, mm. Phillips, Bethany, you know. Hopewell. Great point. We should be branding those it, zones. Just so that people know that they're in a in a heavily populated equestrian area because that seems to be important to people who have lived here and are moving here and it really might help with education with regard to fireworks and things like that if people understand where our hot spots are for equestrian. Great point. Yeah, yeah. that's a great point, right? Speeding, yeah, fireworks, sense. everything. Yeah, that'd be really great. That's a great point. Thanks. That's okay. Nope. Thanks for anybody else. Thanks for everything you guys are doing. Thanks. Guys. Oh, very much. All right. Okay. Sam, come on down. And just so you know, Bob took about ninety percent of your time. I know. <laughs> I, I was concerned that my presentation was much longer yeah. than I normally give. You've only got but three I, minutes. I'm, okay. Feel good now. <laughs> Um, I'll let us leave his up. Um, so good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, thanks for the opportunity for me to update you on a few of the projects that are ongoing right now in HR. Um, first, as you recall, um, at your December 7th meeting, um, we awarded five and 10-year service pens to our employees, and we also declared that week to be Employee Appreciation Week. As part of that, HR coordinated events to say thank you for, to our employees and for what they do. Um, on Monday and Tuesday, we encourage supervisors to take a few minutes and say thanks to their staff. 
On Wednesday, we delivered donuts to all of our locations to employees with a note that says, we do not know what we would do without you. <laughs> um, I know, very punny. Um, Thursday, we sent out candy bars with notes on them again to our, all of our employees. And Friday was, um, we delivered King of Pops ice cream bars to all of our employees, and our employees do like ice cream. Um, all of this was leading into our new performance management system that's currently going on for employees. We're calling it our employee check-in. Um, when we looked at this and we developed it, we kind of tried to reimagine what a performance management system would look like. Um, in developing this, we looked at a few core ideas, and we started with, what if we didn't know what a performance management system looked like and what would we want it to do? Um, and the real thing is, what is the best way to get the employee and the supervisor to have a discussion about the employee's performance and to facilitate that conversation and put everybody sort of in the same playing field? Um, we made this very forward-looking, um, and we wanted to be able to basically say at the end of the day that we're looking to make sort of the low, our lower performers good and our good performers great. Um, what we came up with is a document that's employee-driven. The employee completes the first section of it. And they answer basic questions like what makes them effective in their current job? What could they do or change to be more effective in their current job? Um, what are their long-term goals? And finally, almost a little bit of a 360 evaluation, but what can their supervisor do to help them be more effective in their present position? Then that document transfers to the supervisor. And the supervisor tells the employee what a successful employee would look like, so what are the key things that they're looking for for success? The supervisor works with them to list three goals that they could accomplish during the next cycle where we're doing this. And finally, the supervisor talks about what the employee can do to be more effective. After the document's filled out, the supervisor and the employee sit down and sort of have this conversation about their performance and how it's been over the last six months. We plan on doing these bi-annually. Um, so far, the feedback that we received has been very positive, um, and all of our employees, I think, are getting a lot out of this process. Um, so what else is going on in HR? We've completed our annual open enrollment period um, that coincides with the end of the calendar year and beginning of the next one. We completed a nationwide search for a new fire chief on schedule with the help of an outside consultant. Um, we started an employee newsletter to help communicate things better. We're calling it five things where we talk about employee news, things that they might need to know that they don't otherwise get communication on, so things like retirement and benefits. Um, we talk about upcoming events with the city. But we also try to celebrate the employee with things, people who are promoted, degrees, births of, um, births of children, um, employee birthdays, service anniversaries. Um, it's just, again, it's just another way for us to increase our communications with the employees. Um, we also started in with LeaderGov, which is the training program that we're putting all of our supervisors through, and eventually all of our employees will go through it starting in January. And over the last three months, we've um, started that with supervisors. We've included subjects such as the DISC assessment, which is sort of a profile uh, on a, a little bit of a personality profile, but how you manage people and an insight into that. We talked about, we've talked about service um, servant leadership, as well as emotional intelligence. Um, finally, I just wanted to end with some numbers that you might be interested in. Um, right now, with December still to go, and hopefully we won't have any additions to this, but we've had about an 85% retention rate for the year with our employee base. Um, that means roughly 18 employees have separated service with the city. Um, the interesting thing when you look further into the numbers is that um, three of them left before one year of service was completed. It was actually 105 days was the average stay from among those three employees. Um, you can almost chalk that up as a bad career decision on their part when they joined the city. Um, they left right at a little after three months. We've also had three employees out of those 18 have retired from the city. So if you sort of discount some of those, it certainly increases our retention rate. At the beginning of December, we had six vacant positions. Since then, two of them have been filled. I'm a little disappointed Bob didn't thank me because we're in the final interview stage of completing the replacement for Cody Hendricks. Um, and we've got one more that will be posted, and that will leave us with two additional vacancies. Um, finally, over the last three months, we've managed 12 different events that have reached out to all of our employees. Are there any questions I can answer? 
questions for Sam? Right. Thank you all very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> all right, David. Last but not least. No, I thought Bob was going to be a hard act to follow, well, and I got to go after Sam, donuts. Yeah, Sam took most of your time, too. <laughs> All right. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, just got a handful of things here for you. First off, uh, get the stats out of the way because I know how much you enjoy those. Um, so for the last three months, uh, we've had a pretty stable rate of uh, help desk tickets. Uh, we're opening about 57 tickets a week and closing about 57 tickets a week, so things are pretty stable. <coughs> um, queues hovering around 35 tickets right now, and that's not too bad. And um, as far as a service level agreement that we have with Interdev, 99% of those tickets fell within their resolution time, so working out pretty well. Uh, some project updates here. Uh, I've completed rolling out a uh, whole gaggle of laptops. I don't know if that's an official term, but um, just in a gaggle. If they're geese. No, they're goose. One step down from a Google, you know. it's a big number. <laughs> anyway, so. As long as they don't make a mess, were they? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we try to we we keep it clean. So anyway, it's part of our strategy of uh, a more mobile workforce, and so we've gotten over 40 laptops rolled out in the last couple of months, just uh, uh, for employees in the city, uh, also public safety, police, and fire, where you know they're identified as needing to work from home, they can do that now. So uh, pretty happy about the way that's rolled out. Um, another item we have a web portal for Laserfish. We've been working on that uh, quite a bit this uh, these last several months. Kind of ran into some headwinds with the um, uh, with some of the technology, but we finally got those taken care of, and uh, we're about ready to roll that out. The security team is taking one more pass at, uh, um, at all the you know, potential security concerns, um, and we'll, we'll expect to roll that out in January. Um, an, an upcoming project we have, uh, MiltonGA.gov. Uh, council just passed a uh, uh, approval to register the MiltonGA.gov domain for our use. So. We'll be on the .gov site before you know it, and uh, we'll be, uh, basically this is culminating a whole, it's, I've actually wanted to do this for about five years, where since 2006, we've had uh, our domain. It's just been, you know, we've improved it, we've reconfigured it, we've replaced stuff. Everything has been kind of redone and redone over and over again. So looking forward to starting over from scratch uh, with a, a clean slate, and that's what we're doing with that. So. Uh, we've just started a conversation on this, and we'll be moving forward uh, beginning of the year to get that in place. Um, just want to make a note of a couple of staffing changes. We're losing one of our IT engineers this month. Uh, Robert Bonds is being transferred to another city that's a little bit closer to home for him, so he's not going to have to be a road warrior anymore. So uh, our loss is their gain, and uh, uh, we'll hopefully get him replaced here next uh, in the next month or so. And one other thing is we have a new addition to the team, uh, and I'm, I'm sure you've all noticed Juan. Sitting back there, he's waving. <laughs> yeah, he's been joining us for the last several meetings, and he's going to be taking care of the, uh, a lot of the AV stuff here for some of our you know, council meetings, some of our other big uh, committee meetings. And uh, he's just been amazing to work with. He's, uh, he's an AV guru, and he came in here and got everything fine-tuned. He's been at the meetings and just doing a great job. So we really uh, appreciate his talents here. We're looking forward to working with him for a long time. Questions? Questions for Dave? Thanks for everything you did. Okay. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Um, now I will open up for a, a motion to uh, adjourn into executive session, which we added to uh, discuss land acquisition, potential litigation, and personnel. Second. second. Okay, I have a uh, motion from Councilmember Longoria, the second from Councilmember Jameson, uh, in approval. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous.
I'm not hearing anything. Turn the mic. On. We're good. Okay, now I can hear you. All right, can I get a motion to reconvene? So moved. Move. Second. All, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All so moved. Aye. 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 Aye.